Hello again, I am Blunty, making a bit of an impromptu video today. I hadn't planned on making this video, but I felt inspired to, because I've just spent the last 45 minutes watching the two-parter premiere of the new Thundercats cartoon. And I present this video as a man who was a fan of the original Thundercats cartoon from 1985 to 1987. It only ran for two years, but it made a big impression on chaps like me who grew up with them. I mean, this was in the days of, you know, the 80s Astro Boy series, which was fantastic. Um, and Transformers and stuff. Thundercats was right alongside all those cartoons that guys like me in our late 20s to early 30s loved and grew up on and had the toys and the action figures and I had my own sword of omens when I was a kid. I'd run around the backyard going, Thunder, Thunder, Thundercats, ho! Oh! And all that sort of stuff. I loved it to bits. So when I heard they were remaking the cartoon or making another version of the cartoon or making a follow-on cartoon or whatever they were going to do with it, I was sceptical because, as Astro Boy has proven to me, when... You know, people from this day and age try to reboot a cartoon from the 80s that people like me love. They sometimes screw it up, like they did with the recent Astro Boy cartoon series. And to some extent, the movie, or the movie was better, but nothing compares to the original 80s Astro Boy. If you get a chance, watch those over again. They are surprisingly impactful. Really well written stuff. But anyway, I'm digressing off the point of Thundercats. I love Thundercats growing up, so I was sceptical. I was willing to give it a go, because I love Thundercats that much. I've even considered getting a Thundercats logo tattoo on occasion. That's how much I love Thundercats. It was a part of my youth that I was passionate about. So it was with trepidation and relatively low expectations that I watched the premiere of the Thundercats cartoon, the new one. A couple of things were encouraging. One, I knew they had the original voice actor for Lino. He's the, if you're not familiar with Thundercats at all, Lino is the lead character. He's, you know, Lord of the Thundercats. He's, uh, he's the one in charge, the middle of the action. The person who did his voice in the 80s now plays Lino's father in this series, which was a nice little link for the old school fans. Um, same characters, same kind of personalities, but in a new kind of situation. And it's set up really weird because, I'm not going to spoil it for you, but the story is set up and it tells the story as if this is the third Earth from the original cartoon, but many, 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 many generations after the original Thundercats, defeated Mumra at the end of the last series and all that sort of stuff. But then you've got all these characters who are pretty much the same characters as they were like that. So are they reincarnations? Is it an alternate timeline? What's going on here? I mean, it's, it's a little confusing if you're, if you're familiar with the lore of the original. If you're coming to it fresh, it's not going to bother you. Uh, the other thing I, that gave me hope about this was the voice actor for the new Lino is Will Friedel. I think that's how you say his last name. I've never heard it said. But Will Friedel is something that guys like me might care about as well because he, amongst other things that he's done notably, did, did the voice work for the Terry McGinnis Batman, the Batman of the future, which was a brilliant show that I never ever thought was going to work but turned out to be marvellous in many, many, many ways. And I'm getting that same kind of feeling from this new Thundercats cartoon. Watched it. Skeptical. And as it unfolded, I went, oh, that's a bit confusing, that's a bit weird. And then it got rolling and picked up some pace, and I got enthralled with it. Magically, everything feels well-rounded, well-told, well-thought-out, um, well-portrayed, well-acted, well-animated. Everything about it is technically good. Everything about it is, is emotionally good. I feel happy for having watched it, and happy they didn't screw it up, and happy that it may actually even be better than the original series. And I never expected that. It, it feels like a, a rich world in which these Thundercats can do their things and have their adventures and the main storyline, where they left off after the premiere, where, they, where the series is going to you know, start from and what's happened after everything that's happened. The jumping off point for the rest of the series, the point of the rest of the series is an interesting one. Uh, the return of Mumra was interesting and overall and I'm trying to not give you any spoilers here, because I think it's really important you watch this off your own bat and, and not know what to expect as it unfolds in its own way. It's good. The mood of it, um, and how seriously they were taking it, like it's not, let's make a Thundercats cartoon and make a few thousand dollars off merchandising some toys. It felt like the attitude that was given to Avatar The Last Airbender uh, from Nickelodeon, which was a fantastic cartoon that was... That, that it was taken seriously, it was written well. It wasn't written for kids, although plenty of kids enjoyed it. It was written for people who just like good entertainment. And that's the feeling I got from Thundercats. It is going to be good entertainment, quality entertainment. 
I mean, you know, like I said before, they screwed up Astro Boy really badly. It took them like three or four tries to get Transformers right. You know, they went through three or four completely different series before they got it even close to right. But Thundercats, I think they might have got it first go. You know, they've got, they've got some interesting story themes there of, of power and control and bloodlines and competition and, and notes on, on slavery and the downtrodden and, and betrayal and all this sort of Shakespearean kind of stuff. I mean, it's not as wanky as Shakespeare because it's just a cartoon for kids, but still, it's got all those kind of details. Uh, it, it feels like all the bits and pieces and the threads they're pulling at are all, they all have a a tight weave. They all fit together properly. It doesn't feel loose. It doesn't feel lazy. It feels it feels like the people who are making this are people who grew up with the original Thundercats and wanted to turn it into something excellent. They have passion about, you know, they, they believe in the Thundercats, which is probably not too far from the truth because the people who are making this are probably in their late 20s to early 30s, just like me, who grew up with it. So they, they, they have a passion for it and I think that's coming through. And for those of you curious, yes, Snarf is still in it. And uh, if you're not familiar with Snarf, he's kind of like the Jar Jar Binks of the Thundercats. He's kind of a just this little retarded throwback dumbass who does nothing but get in the way while trying to do the right thing. His heart's in the right place, but he's a complete screw up. Well, Snarf is in the new one, but fortunately this time they've dumbed him down even further to the point where he, he can't talk at all. All he does is act like a surprisingly intelligent house cat, which is brilliant as far as I'm concerned. And I think you guys should check it out. And if you have seen it, tell me what you uh, tell me what you thought about it in the comments below. If you haven't seen it yet, tell me what you're expecting. But um, I was pleasantly surprised by it. I was honestly not expecting much. I was expecting to watch. I was going to give it three or four episodes, and I was going to throw it on my shirt. Nah, nah. But no, I'm, uh, I'm hooked from here on in. I'm going to watch it all the way through. Another slight change from the original is that there's no... Uh, uh, are they nude? Kind of moments in the original um, pilot, at least, for the, or the opening episodes of the, of the original series of Thundercats. There's a bit before they got to Third Earth, where they finally set up shop, and they're on the, on the ship and escaping Thunder and stuff like that. They're, they're wandering around nude. They've got no nipples and no genitals, but they are nude. Well, Chitara wore a belt, but it still looked weird and still made you feel kind of weird and out when you're a you know, you're twelve year old boy watching these Chitara with her tits out and she's nude. If my mum sees me watching this, I'm in so much trouble. But there's none of that in the new one. They all wear clothes all the time. Shame really. Check out the new Thundercats. You may very well be pleasantly surprised just like I was. Thanks for watching. I am Blunty and I will catch you next time. Cheers. Actually, just before I really, really go, another new cartoon to check out that I checked out out of pure morbid curiosity is the new My Little Ponies cartoon. And I feel completely emasculated saying that, but it's actually a lot of fun. I'm a brony up here, apparently. If you don't know what a brony is, you should probably Google that. I don't know whether it would be ashamed or just happy that I found something that I enjoy. Still hetero, I promise.